بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم ویلکم ٹو دا الیکٹریکل انجینئرنگ یوٹیوب چینل دس از اے سیکنڈ لیکچر آن ٹرانسفارمرز اینڈ ان دس لیکچر آئی ایم گوئنگ ٹو ڈسکرائب ہاؤ ٹو سالو اے ٹرانسفارمر سرکٹ ان وچ وی ہیو دی آلٹرنیٹنگ ان پٹ وولٹیج اینڈ وی ہیو سم لوڈ اینڈ وی ہیو ون اور ٹو ٹرانسفارمرز ان بٹوین سو فار سالونگ سچ پرابلمز وی مسٹ ہیو Uh, the idea of the ex- mathematical expressions of the powers at the input and the output side. So there are two types of powers. One is called active power and one is called reactive power and uh, the algebraic, uh, the vector sum of these two powers is called a parent power which is represented by S. So this S is equal to the product of voltage and current. So S is equal to Vi. So the horizontal component of uh, S is equal to Vi cos phi and its vertical component is called a, a, a reactive power which is equal to Vi sin phi. So at the primary side we can calculate uh, the input power using this expression. So P in is equal to Vpi P cos theta P and Q in is the reactive power at the input side or the primary side. So this is equal to Vpi P sin theta P. in and similarly p out is equal to vs is cos theta s and uh, q out is equal to vs is sin theta out so uh, vs is equal to uh, vp over a and uh, similarly uh, is is equal to a times ip so by putting these uh, substitutions in this expression p out can be written as vp over a into a ip and a is cancelled out with a so we will get vp ip cos theta and this is equal to p in so in transformers p out is equal to p in so this is the apparent power uh, which is uh, s in and it is equal to vp ip and it is also equal to vs is so s in is equal to s out and p in is equal to p out so this is uh, uh, a simple system in which we can see two transformers Uh, and uh, we can solve uh, such a circuit by applying phasor uh, mathematics. So this is an AC voltage source which is connected at the primary of this first transformer and this first transformer is actually 1 ratio 10 transformer and 0.18 and J0.24 this is the uh, transmission line whose equivalent characteristic uh, impedance is given and this is another transformer whose turn ratio is 10 ratio 1 and here we have the load. So actually uh, in this system uh, we are actually transmitting power from the sender and to the receiver and but first we have to step up uh, the voltage uh, 10 times then we will have a transmission line and then we will have a step down transformer whose turn ratio is 10 ratio 1. So at the end we will get the same voltage at the load which are actually applied before the transmission system. So the idea of uh, stepping up the voltage before the transmission is to actually step down the current. So when we step up the voltage we are actually stepping down the current and when we reduce uh, the current before the transmission the line losses will be reduced and uh, the second benefit of stepping down the current is the less requirement of copper for uh, designing the, the for designing these transmission conductors so we will need less copper because the current is reduced so small cross section of uh, the conductor used for transmission will be allowed so after the transmission we have to again step down the voltage which we actually stepped up before the transmission so uh, the same turn ratio will be applied over here for this uh, second transformer and at the end we get the same voltage which are available before the transmission so uh, these are the expressions which uh, will be used to solve uh, this problem and first of all, we have to eliminate this transformer before solving this circuit. So for uh, eliminating this transformer, we have to refer this impedance to the primary side of this transformer. And when we shift this impedance to the primary side, 
we have to do the transformation is a square so a square is actually n1 over n2 for this transformer which we also discussed in the previous lecture so a is equal to n1 over n2 and in this case a is equal to 10 by 1 or equal to 10 so we have to multiply this load impedance with a square so it will become 400 plus j 300 and we get uh, these impedances now now we have to eliminate this first transformer and we have to refer these impedances at the primary side of this transformer and after doing this transformation we will get a single uh, loop system so the a for this transformer is equal to 1 by 10 so a square will be 1 by 100 and after this uh, transformation this uh, impedance will be divided by 100 and it will become 4 plus j3 but this transmission line parameters will also be reduced under time so this is 0 0.0018 and this is j0.0024 so now we have to solve this simple system to calculate the line current and uh, we can calculate the line losses uh, by applying this expression okay so this is i line and it is equal to v divided by z line plus z load and v is equal to 480 with an angle of 0 and z line is equal to 0 0.18 plus j 0 0.24 and this is the load impedance so in this case we have obtained this 90.8 with an angle of minus 37.8 degrees angle when we have no trans no transformer in between so this is the system in which there is no transformer and we are not doing the stepping up and stepping down uh, before and after the transmission respectively so in that case the current is equal to this uh, 90.8 with an angle of minus 37.8 degrees amperes and uh, the load impedance uh, the load voltage can be calculated by multiplying this line current with this load impedance and this uh, load voltage will be equal to 454 with an angle of minus 0 0.9 degrees now we have to calculate the line losses which uh, are equal to the i square r losses and this is our line current we have to take the square of this line current and uh, the uh, r line is actually 0 0.18 so when we multiply this R line, uh, we will get uh, 1484. So these are called the line losses, uh, which actually correspond to uh, this system. So similarly, we can also calculate uh, these line losses for this system. And in this system, we can see that this uh, line resistance is extremely small it is 100 times smaller than that we have for this problem in which there is no stepping up or step stepping down the ac voltage so in this case the line losses will be 100 times smaller so it will be 14.84 if we apply the same expression for this system then the line losses will be extremely small and uh, this is actually the purpose of stepping up and stepping down of the ac voltage before the transmission so transmission is always done at extremely high voltage 132 kv or 220 kv 230 kv these are actually uh, typical values of the transmission voltages so this is the primary voltage and uh, we can also analyze and compare the shapes and phases of uh, the applied voltage and the produced flux so this is the expression for uh, the induced emf at the primary side and uh, from this expression we can determine the flux by integrating this voltage and dividing it by np so this is the expression for the flux and uh, this is minus Vp is equal to Vm cos omega t. So this is Vm cos omega t dt. 
and uh, we have to divide this expression by omega and multiply it also with omega and this is 1 over np so it, this integration answer is minus vm over omega and p sin omega t so if we plot this vp which is equal to vm cos omega t and if we plot this phi t which is minus sin omega t so we will get such uh, a profile of the voltage and the flux and clearly in this case we can see that the flux is leading the voltage by 90 degrees. So we have to remember this very important thing that in transformers flux always leads the primary voltage by 90 degrees. So this is all very uh, introduc uh, introductory but uh, useful discussion of uh, transformers and we can also discuss the dot convention uh, for a typical transformer. So this is a two winding transformer and if we have uh, such dots uh, present in the system then the primary and the secondary voltages will be in phase with each other. Okay, So if we have positive at this terminal then we will have positive of the voltage at, at this terminal and this means that if this is the polarity of uh, the output voltage then vp and vs will be in phase so such vp and vs profiles will be observed but in that case if the current is entering this dot at the primary side then this the current will be at the secondary side the current will be leaving from this side so it means that here current is entering but here current is leaving because this winding is actually acting as a source and this winding is actually acting as a load so if the current is entering here since the polarity is positive voltage polarity is positive and voltage polarity is positive over here it means the current is entering in this uh, at this side because this is working as a load and this winding is behaving as a source and if we have positive of the voltage polarity over here the current will be leaving from this dot so in that case the primary and the secondary currents will be 180 degree out of phase because at one side the current is entering the winding and at the other side the current is leaving the winding so this is ip this is is and here you can see the currents are 180 degree out of phase with each other and opposite of these profiles will be observed if we have such dot conventions and here you can see uh, the dot conventions are opposite so in this case the voltages will be out of phase but the current will be in phase in this configuration so this is how dot uh, convention can be interpreted for a transformer and this is an equivalent circuit of a transformer and uh, this is the primary side this corresponds to the primary winding resistance this uh, reactance corresponds to the leakage reactance at the primary winding this is called the magnetizing reactants uh, and this is called eddy loss eddy current loss resistor and this resistor actually corresponds to the heating of the core so when every transformer is working the core heats up and in order to uh, explain that heating loss or heating component uh, at the core we have to specify the resistor because all heating losses in a transformer or in any other electrical appliances are actually a reason of the equivalent resistance uh, in that appliance. So this is the primary winding, this is the secondary winding, this is the primary winding resistance and this is the leakage reactance. Sorry, this is the secondary winding resistance and this is the leakage reactance of the secondary winding. So if we want to refer the secondary parameters to the primary side, we have to do the transformation A square RS and J A square XS. And this is IS. So current will be divided by the term ratio and voltage will be multiplied by the term ratio. Similarly, we can do the opposite or we can do, uh, we can refer the primary parameters at the secondary side. And in that case, these parameters will be divided by A square, this voltage will be divided by A and this primary current will be multiplied with A. And the secondary parameters in that case will be unchanged. So this is approximate equivalent circuit of transformer. You can see there is a branch in between the primary and the secondary windings. And this branch uh, impedance is very high. And we can safely shift this branch either 
over here either to the this end or either to this end so in that case we will call it as an approximate equivalent circuit of a transformer and this is r equivalent and j x equivalent so the benefit of shifting this magnetizing branch either to the right or to the left is that we can simply add the primary and secondary resistances and reactances which we have done over here we have actually shown only one resistor and reactance in this case and this r equivalent is equal to rp plus ask rs and x equivalent is equal to xp plus ask rxs and similar can be done for the equivalent circuit refer to the secondary side so in that case uh, such expressions will be obtained so now i am moving towards various tests which can be performed on a transformer so first test is called open circuit test second test is called short circuit test and uh, in open circuit test uh, we have to keep the secondary terminals open and we have to apply a specific uh, ac voltage at the primary side and we have to connect a watt meter and a ampere meter in series with the winding and a volt meter in parallel with the winding and uh, we will read these values of uh, p open circuit i open circuit and v open circuit and we know that p open circuit p is equal to vi cos theta and we when we have known all these three quantities we can calculate this uh, power factor in open circuit conditions and uh, we can also calculate this uh, react uh, this admittance of the transformer and that will be equal to the ratio of open circuit current to the open circuit voltage and with an angle of minus theta degrees so this theta will be calculated from this expression by taking the cosine inverse of this expression and uh, this is a polar form of this uh, admittance and this can be converted to the rectangular form of the complex number so it will have a real part and the imaginary part and the real part is called the conductance and the imaginary part is called the susceptance and uh, by taking the reciprocal of these two parameters we will get 1 over rc minus j 1 over xm so these are the magnetizing branch components of uh, the transformer and uh, so if we analyze this uh, open circuit uh, test of the transformer from here you can see when this side is open circuit all the primary current will be flowing through this magnetizing branch and the impedance of this magnetizing branch is very very higher than these the impedance of this uh, primary winding so we will ignore this primary winding impedance and only this uh, magnetizing branch impedance will be considered and uh, these parameters can be calculated by the open circuit test so in the short circuit test we will actually short circuit the secondary winding and in that case since the impedance of this magnetization branch is very high we will assume that all of the current which is flowing through the primary is actually passing through the secondary because current will always follow the short the easiest path or the low impedance path so in that case these parameters will be neglected and only the current will be flowing through the primary and the secondary windings so primary winding resist so winding resistances and both winding reactances can be can be calculated by the short circuit test so in short circuit conditions we have to be careful that while we are doing the short circuit at the secondary terminal uh, the current will be very high at the secondary so we have to increase the primary voltage very carefully and at every instant we have to note down the current which is flowing through the primary and uh, as soon as we get the rated current flowing through the primary we have to stop increasing the primary voltage so at very small primary voltage we will be able to see high current or rated current flowing through this primary and after that instant we will not further increase the primary voltage otherwise both primary and the secondary windings will be damaged will be heated up and they will be permanently damaged since uh, in that case only the copper losses or winding losses will be there and uh, the winding of the copper 
has very small resistance because copper is a good conductor and in that case very small voltage must be applied so these are the expressions which are finally obtained as a result of short circuit test we can calculate the power factor and we can calculate this impedance by multiplying this primary voltage to the primary current so these currents and voltages and this power will be it will be read from these three measuring devices so this is at sd and uh, this is theta which is calculated from this uh, formula and uh, this zse will be divided into real and the imaginary parts the real part will give uh, this rp plus a square rs overall equivalent resistance of the windings and this imaginary part will give the overall uh, leakage reactances uh, equivalent reactances of the windings so these are the two tests which we will also provide us the core losses and the copper losses so when we are performing this open circuit test all the power which is read by this watt meter will correspond to the core losses since um, all of the power is dissipated across this magnetization branch and this magnetization branch corresponds to the core of the transformer so in open circuit test uh, all power which is read from this watt meter corresponds to the core losses and in short circuit test all of the current is passing through the primary and the secondary windings so the power which is read from this watt meter in short circuit test will correspond to the copper losses of the transformer so next thing is the voltage regulation and efficiency the voltage regulation of the transformer is actually the relative difference of the no load voltage and the full load voltage and uh, that uh, relative difference can be mathematically expressed by vs no load minus vs full load divided by vs no load multiplied by 100 okay so the secondary voltage can be represented in terms of the primary voltage so vp over a minus uh, vs at full load divided by vs at full load so in no load condition we know that there are no losses across uh, the windings of the transformer so at no load when we have no load over here there will be no power loss across these winding terminals and we will get this is since this is vp over a so all this voltage at the primary side will appear across this secondary side and uh, we can say that under no load condition vs is equal to vp over a but uh, in full load condition definitely vs uh, will be different from this vp over a so this expression will be used to calculate the voltage regulation so that is all about our today's uh, discussion on uh, transformers i have i hope you have enjoyed and, and understood the concepts which are discussed in this video for watching more similar videos please stay tuned to this uh, youtube channel until the next video it's goodbye